Can you imagine finding out that you grew up with nuclear waste in your backyard? In part two of her interview, author Linda Maurice describes how living near contaminated Coldwater Creek impacted her family. It's a personal glimpse into the effect of nuclear waste left behind from World War II. Hello, it's Kathy from AGC Books. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button for more content. Now, author Linda Maurice tells us about the people at the heart of her book, Nuked, Echoes of the Hiroshima Bomb in St. Louis. So, Linda, one of the things that was so interesting about your book is that you have a personal connection to the Coldwater Creek site. Can you tell us a little bit about that in your own family? When I was nine, our family moved to Florissant and uh, lived about a thousand feet from a major tributary in, of Coldwater Creek. We never in a million years would have suspected that anything, that this contamination existed or, or uh, that we were in any way vulnerable. But in my family of five, three people uh, died uh, early of, uh, of cancers. Um, given the closeness of the floodwaters in the uh, 1957 flood and given what the uh, other findings there were, it makes us very suspicious of whether there's a connection. But I make it pretty clear in the book that you can never attribute a one cancer death to a single cause. Uh, when the federal government confirmed that people who grew up and played and worked in our neighborhood may have an increased uh, chance of, of getting uh, cancer from contaminants, then of course uh, it, it, it made me more concerned or at least wanting to do the research and inform people of the health hazards. The neighborhoods that you're talking about are neighborhoods that at one time were, were built by veterans coming back from the war. Mm -hmm. They wanted a, a nice house for their family. And Florissant at one point, I didn't know that, was the largest um, community in the municipal area, right. in the region, you know, as far as the small municipalities in St. Louis. And so you painted a really kind of a, almost it's a lost time of, you know, nice of families, nice homes, mm -hmm. former veterans. They went to work for the defense industry, a lot of them, at Boeing and McDonnell Douglas. Right. And built those neighborhoods up there in Florissant. Yes. Um, and uh, thought they were going out to some, you know, <laughs> peaceful place whether <laughs> they never would have imagined. How did St. Louis get so lucky to be the site where they decided to bring <laughs> this? Well, some of it was, and this is true of uh, Americans generally, they were very slow to recognize uh, the importance of land pollution or even know what it was, even see that stuff in the land could be polluting. Now when you say how did St. Louis get so lucky, uh, the last chapter of my book, um, I, I'm saying this wasn't just St. Louis. Actually, there are a number of communities throughout the United States that were involved in the Manhattan Project or produced things for our nuclear weapons programs that are paying the price. Hanford, Washington is one of them. Jefferson Colorado, uh, County, Colorado is another one. We have problems that were passed on to this generation that uh, were created in a previous one. So what exactly was the connection? Mallinckrodt Chemical is, was a well-known company here. Yes. Uh, what part did they play in the story? They, they purified the uranium. They got it out of the ore and they had it in a form that it could then be enriched at uh, Oak Ridge and then sent to go into the bomb. So uh, uranium workers worked round the clock. They didn't know uh, what they were working on. It was all top secret. And when the bomb was dropped on Japan and President Truman announced it, it was only then that they realized uh, what they'd been engaged in. There's an activist, little activist group called Just Moms St. Louis that I'm familiar with. It's citizen activism that's kind of bringing this about. Right. Can you talk a little about that? They were formed in response to the situation at the Westlake landfill. And they were operating in the same time frame uh, initially 
as Coldwater Creek Facts, which was an, another group operating, I would say, more in the, in the fluorescent area. A few people belonged to both groups, but mostly people uh, joined one or the other. But was uh, Just Moms, I think the name is really interesting because um, often in, in the history of uh, women getting involved in, in activism of this nature, they've said, oh, I'm just a mom, you know. And uh, so minimizing the, their own uh, significant contributions, but also just moms. It's also moms for justice, if you think mm, about it. Okay. There's a double yeah. meaning there. I don't know if they intended it that way, but it's very appropriate. That way, but that's, it is but, appropriate. So they are, they are concerned about the West Lake landfill, and there was a suit from the state, and there was mm -hmm. a settlement, but still they are living with uh, a situation that it, is unpleasant and and not what you would want if you're looking out for health. So the Just Moms group, some of them have had children with problems, is yes. that correct? Yes, and that's true in the Coldwater Creek Facts group, yes. That cancer is not the only illness that has come out of that situation, autoimmune and birth defects and so on. They talk about cancer clusters. I have a friend who grew up near the creek and she says she, her family was a, a cancer cluster mm -hmm. in some ways because she had breast cancer, she recovered, but another, a brother of hers died very young. Her parents both had cancer. And, uh, but it's hard, it, it's sort of hard to make that claim sometimes because it's not always the case. Right. I mean, you know, we make the claim and it, I feel it's probably true, but trying to get a government agency or physicians to do something about it, right. they, they will tell you, well, not everybody is affected that way. Yeah. So you can't no. say that's the cause. No, well, you can't say it. You can say that it's very dangerous, and there's no amount of radiation that's entirely safe, and, and everyone agrees to that. And there are some amounts that are decidedly unsafe. Um, having a cancer cluster to meet that definition, people would have had to have everybody in those North County areas stay put and not move and study them over time. And of course, that's not going to happen, so you don't get the data that you uh, would need to declare it a cancer cluster. And it, particularly since Americans at that time were moving once in every five years. So that's why Facebook played a role in the, uh, the Coldwater Creek Facts Group with their high school reunion for the first time, because remember, north of 270 hadn't been tested, rem remediated, or anything. And this was the class of uh, uh, 1988, 20 years later. So we're talking, you know, a lot of, a lot of years of contamination. That's how they discovered there was a real problem because people had moved all over the place, but they came together on Facebook to find out about the reunion. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there were some cancers that, like uh, the cancer of the appendix is extremely rare, but it wasn't rare in this neighborhood. So um, I, I think one of the uh, scientists that I quote said, we, we can't say that this is a cancer cluster. We can't rule it out, but we can't say it is. But uh, the government did say that people who lived in that neighborhood may have an increased uh, incidence of, of, of cancer and other diseases. And, uh, and after all, the CDC sent in their toxic disease. So when that happened, people knew they were, uh, there was some attention being paid to them. Yeah. Was it hard emotionally at all to write it because of the family connection? At first, when I found out about the government report, I was stunned. And actually, there had been a report in the paper earlier that this Coldwater Creek Facts Group was saying it was the creek. And they had taken, and at first the state did a survey and they went by zip codes and their methodology was flawed and they said, oh no, that's not true. But then they redid it when, and uh, they agreed and that's when the CDC and, you know, sent people in and so on. So, but once I th saw the acknowledgement, then I thought it took me a few days to get my head around the fact that we were living in this place that was home and the whole time 
this was going on and we had no idea of it. And then I started thinking, well, I, I wonder about so-and-so at the bottom of the street, and, and, and he, he died of cancer, and I wonder about so-and-so, and, you know. However, for me, it had been a long time since I had lost my family members, so I'd come to terms with that, but uh, I think it would have been much harder if those, that grief were fresh. In my own mind, uh, I, I know that you can't attribute a single cancer death to a single cause. There is this health problem that people needed to know about. Uh, we need to pay attention to waste, you know, and we need to realize that uh, radionuclides don't go away, they're not washed away. But I know why the decisions were made. I know what people were thinking, I think, for the most part, and now uh, I would I would like to see the cleanup <laughs> proceed. I would like to see it proceed faster, you know, more money being put into it because I think I know the Corps is working hard. 2038 uh, is a long time. It's a very long time, yeah. You had a few poignant lines in your book where you talk about um, later these, these people as well as others who came after and li now live around the contaminated sites as being truly casualties of World War II. Right. Never thought of it that way before. Right, and um, yes, they were. Um, at the time, uh, some things were known about uranium. They knew it was dangerous, didn't know how dangerous. Mr. Mallinckrodt actually had safeguards in place that were ahead of the industry, but not nearly enough. And so uh, some of them, when it first came out that they'd helped end the war, they were very proud and said, I worked for Mallinckrodt, and, uh, and were, were loyal to the company, but in later years, many of them developed cancer and said, um, you know, my job might have had something to do with this. So, um, so they were casualties, as were uh, uh, some residents of North St. Louis County, uh, whose neighborhoods were bordered by the creek. Thanks again for joining us and watch for part three of the Linda Maurice interview where we look at what's being done to clean up nuclear waste in St. Louis. Make sure to subscribe for new content and click the thumbs up to like this video.